housewife. If you like the content of this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment down below. Um, it would really mean a lot to me. And if you're listening to this on Apple or Spotify podcasts, don't forget to leave reviews. Um, again, reach out to me if you have any questions, feel free to interact. Um, I'd like to hear from all of you. Um, so today I'm going to talking, I'm going to be talking about reaping what you sow within the relationships of, um, stepchildren. Um, and you know, cause I feel like it's very common. I actually read an article this week that said, according to the article, <laughs> um, Canada has the 29th highest divorce rate. And of those divorced, almost a third involve kids. So it's becoming increasingly popular or common, I should say, to have stepkids. Um, and so it, for myself, I was, um, I grew up with a step parent. Um, and then my first marriage didn't work out and we had kids. So, um, there's a step parent in their life on both sides. And then my, my second husband has children from his first marriage. So I'm a step parent as well. So I have a lot of different perspectives. I've got, I've gone through a lot of different things, lots of emotions. And so I just kind of want to share that with you today. So when I got divorced, it was really difficult for me because the idea of having to share custody was a battle, only getting to see my kids 50% of the time. But then when your ex-partner starts to date or gets remarried, you, you start to kind of think about who is this person that has, um, that's being, that is around my children. And if they're young children, you want to know the kind of influence that they may have. And it's a lot of things that are outside of your control and it can drive you absolutely crazy trying to control all the variables when it's out of your control. You've got to give it to God. And I know I struggled when I first got divorced because I wasn't giving it to God. So that's the first lesson there, I think. Um, and then another fear, <clears throat> excuse me, another fear, especially with young kids like mine who are 10 and 13. Um, well, I guess 11 and 13 <laughs> um, is are they going to love my child as their own or, you know, are they going to be mean? Are they going to be that, you know, Disney stepmom, you know? Um, so that's another perspective. Uh, so you just need to pray for the peace that passes all understanding. If you're a Christian, um, you need to give those troubles to God and pray for the peace and calming yourself down. Um, I know it's really difficult in those cases. So, um, I hope that that gives a little bit of encouragement if you're going through a divorce or if you are trying to navigate, um, with your children during the divorce. Um, I also think another really big thing is not bashing the other parent, even if they were the one who kind of blew up the marriage, if they did things that caused the, the downfall, you should never bash them in front of the kids. And I know that it's, you hear it a lot um, on like with counseling and stuff like that, you're never supposed to bash them, but you know, we are human. I just think that you need to guard your tongue, you know? So like if Lily comes to me one day and she starts complaining about her dad, which I mean, we all complain about our parents <laughs> and I was to turn around and agree with her and then tell her like, Oh, your dad, this or that number one, that's going to model to her that she can disrespect her father, which is not good. Another one is it's going to, when she gets older and she thinks back to that situation, she's going to think, well, if you're saying that behind dad's back, what are you saying about other people? So that calls your integrity into question. And then again, if she goes and hears that from me and then never hears anything from her father, she's going to view me in a different way. Even though I'm her mom, you can love your mom or your dad and still not respect the things that they do. You can like for myself, I love my mom. I will do anything for her, but she's chosen to stay in a relationship that I can't support. And therefore I can't see her because it's hurtful to me, but I will always love my mom. Again, if she ever needed anything, I would be there for her in a heartbeat because nothing will change how much I love my mom. She's my mom. Same thing for your kids. You have to think of it that way. So I will never trash talk their dad. You know, even, even if I agree with what they're saying, it's, 
no, you can't talk about your dad that way. And so I just think that that's something that you need to be very mindful of. You need to have God control you. Working out of your flesh and those emotional responses is what can be so destructive. Um, and you need to understand that your kids still love their parents equally. You know, they still love the parent, even though, like, even if that parent was the one who blew everything up and if they're older kids and they understand why the marriage failed, um, you're still there. Those kids are still going to love that parent no matter what. So that's something that you need to go to God with. If you're struggling with that, if you're struggling with the fact that your kids don't want to be team you, you know, so, um, this verse really helped me out through navigating a lot of things um, with regards to my children and my stepchildren. Um, it's Galatians 6, verse 8 to 9. It says, Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. That really spoke to me because I'm pouring into relationships and that fleshy part of me wants to be accepted and wants to be reciprocated, you know, because society tells us that if they're not pouring into you as much as you are to them, then you should just see you later, peace out. And it can be easy to do that with stepkids because they're not biologically yours. For myself, I have a son who doesn't live with me right now. And as much as that's hurtful, I will never stop trying to build a bridge with him um, and, and try to gain that relationship back. And I know this is just a, a season that he has to go through. I don't know what's on the other side for him, but you know, eventually we will come back together. I just think that right now, this is something that he needs to go through, but I will never give up. And so I kind of wish that I put that mindset in the beginning when my second husband and I got married. He has older children, they're in their 20s, and um, we've, we've had a few speed bumps along the way. You know, and it's, trying, it's hard to navigate when you move into a house with a whole bunch of people. You know, I had my two kids here, or three of them at a time. Um, I had them all here, and then, you know, two stepchildren living downstairs, and it, it got to be kind of busy, and, and although I loved it, there were a lot of things that we had to learn about each other, <laughs> you know? And even for myself and my husband, Chris, like we didn't live together first. We got married, we got, we, we got this house, we moved in and we got married at like 5.30 over Zoom. And then we started living together. So, I mean, it was all new to us. So I really wish that I kind of focused on this verse at that time because you know I was having struggles and for me on on my point as a stepmom I wanted to be accepted I wanted to be liked I wasn't trying to compete with anybody because you can't I know that my ex-husband spouse can't compete with me and just like Chris knows he can't compete with my kids dad you know it's not about that um it's about that wanting to be accepted and liked and and some people have that more than others and that's something that I'm trying to work on, you know? So um, when I'm pouring into a relationship um, with a stepchild, you know, it can be really hard not to give up, you know? And I remember being in my 20s, I wasn't really focused on how my parents felt with the things that I did. And so it, in your 20s, I feel like we all go through that selfish phase. It's all about us. We are the main character in our movie and we don't see anybody else. I just think that that is a rite of passage for everyone in their 20s. I remember being like that. My friends were like that. And eventually as time goes on, that starts to go away, especially when you have kids and, and things like that in marriage and stuff. So um, at that point, you know, my stepkids were very much focused and like here, right? Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And then, but then some of the actions can come across as them not liking you, you know, or that's how I perceived it. And so you go into this like whirlwind of they don't like me, I'm going to stop doing this. And then you start retracting from the relationship and then that in itself can cause problems. So I really want anyone who is dealing with um, a blended family to really focus on 
whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life if you sow from your or sorry yeah if you sow to please your flesh you're going to emotionally respond and more often than not it's not going to be good and it's going to cause destruction like the verse says and then again let us not become weary in doing good that's how i felt i felt like i was banging my head against the wall in some points and I was ready to give up and my husband was just like, no, it's fine, you know, just stay the course. And now we have a great relationship. I, I feel anyways with my stepkids, I have great relationships with all of them. And um, really recently with the, my oldest um, bonus daughter, Jordan, and, and now we have this uh, really beautiful relationship that I feel is more of like a peer-based um, because she's in her twenties and I'm in my thirties. So it's kind of odd to look at her as a daughter, but, um, I still love her like one. I still want only good things for her. And now our relationship is such that like, she comes to me with things and confides in me and you know, it's, it's great. And I love it. And, um, uh, I just, it took a lot of time for us to get here. And I think that's another thing you need to allow time for the transition and not expect too much too soon. And that was my mistake. I was expecting way too much, way too soon. They had their parents together for 20 plus years. I look at my kids and they, I feel like they're a little bit more used to it, but we got divorced when they were young. My stepkids, they had their parents together for 20 years. So it's going to take time and they are great people. They're very accepting, but it's still going to take time, you know? So you need to, you need to allow the time that that sowing period can be for a really long time before you see the harvest. And then I think another thing that some stepkids um, or like stepkids um, and your biological kids, and then even myself, because I'm from, um, my parents were divorced. When your parent gets remarried, they have a marriage covenant. So when the step parent is trying to tell you something to do or offer correction, and the parent backs them up and you disagree, it can feel like the parent's abandoning you. And that's not the case. They are staying true to their marriage covenant, which I spoke about in my last podcast. There is no covenant with your children. There is no covenant with your parent. And so it's different. It's a different relationship. That is born out of a deeper love. That, that right there is an instinct to love. You know, like there's nothing that my kids can do that would ever make me stop loving them. My partner, it's a choice. It's a marriage covenant. So I just want you to stay strong and don't lash out. Don't expect a quick return. And there's blessings on the other side, a deep relationship with your stepkids, a deeper connection, respect, integrity stays intact. And you model that for everybody, for your stepkids and your kids. And then trust is built. And then God is proud of you, which is the ultimate blessing. So I hope that if you're going, if you're struggling with blended families, I hope this was encouraging. If you know someone who could use this little podcast, send it their way and stay tuned for next Thursday, seven o'clock. I will have another podcast coming at you. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.